Welcome to today's webinar on OpenToro, which is Toro College's Open Educational Resources Initiative. My name is Georgia Westbrook, and I am Toro's OER and Instruction Librarian, normally working in Manhattan. Here's what we'll talk about today. What are Open Educational Resources? The benefits of OER, OER and online teaching, particularly in times of emergency instruction like we are experiencing now, how OER can support student success and retention, how you can use OER in your teaching, finding and evaluating OER, and how the Toro College Libraries can support you in using OER. Open educational resources are high quality teaching, learning, and research materials that are free for people everywhere to use and repurpose. You can see I've bolded parts of the definition that I want to highlight. High quality. OER are very often peer reviewed by experts in the fields that they cover, just like a commercial textbook would be. There are even OER available that were previously published as commercial textbooks before being released from copyright protection and made available with an open license. Free. This is free in the sense of money, true OER do not cost anything to use, and free in that they are free of copyright restrictions. They are licensed with something called Creative Commons licensing, which I will explain in more detail later, and which allow for expanded use and repurpose. While copyright allows the creator of a work to tightly control access and use of their work, OER licensed with Creative Commons licensing allows for use without permission and the opportunity to adapt works and redistribute those adapted works, and all the user needs to do is give credit to the original creator. There are OER versions of almost every kind of teaching and learning material. Textbooks are the most common, but there are also entire courses made available openly that can be imported into Canvas, lecture slides, test banks, and answers for many subjects, online assignments, videos, audio resources, and more. Many Toro faculty have already begun using OER. This is the cover of a textbook exploring public speaking that we are using with undergraduate speech and communications courses at NYSCAD. Um, there's a PDF version, a Word version, lecture slides, and a test bank available by request. This is just one example of a very robust OER kit, but there are many others out there too. There are many benefits to OER, both for you and for your students. First, OER course materials are free forever. There is no need to worry about paying for access codes that expire after a short amount of time and most importantly, students save money that can be spent elsewhere to help them complete their studies, like paying for childcare. Rather than needing to pick up more shifts or even a second job to pay for course materials, students can focus their time on their studies. Using OER has been shown in general to improve course enrollment, persistence, and completion because they allow for greater access by students with disabilities and because of that lower cost of materials for students. OER can be modified and updated to fit the needs of your class. Rather than teach to the textbook because you are having students spend so much and you want them to get their money's worth, you can teach exactly what you want. You can update your text in the middle of the semester or in between semesters, and you don't have to wait for a new edition from a publisher. OER are an opportunity to engage with institutions around the world as you use work from others and share your created materials. And Students can access materials anywhere, at any time, online or offline once downloaded. This is especially important to consider as we navigate the uncertainty of future semesters. Like I just said, OER is a great option for an uncertain future. Every student has access to the materials online from day one of the course and even before it begins. You won't lose any time to students who need to wait to purchase materials. As I also said in the previous slide, students never lose access to these materials. This is particularly great for sequenced programs in which students might want to refer back to earlier course materials as they get into higher level classes. Beyond adjusting the content itself, 
you can quickly adjust your OER to a shorter semester or a longer one or other challenges. And finally, I want to keep repeating this because it's another very important factor. OER improves persistence and retention. There's little difference and little disruption when a quote unquote out of class crisis like the novel coronavirus crisis happens. Librarians at Montgomery College, a community college in Maryland, for example, found that when they made the switch to online emergency teaching this semester, the retention rate for OER courses was 85%, which is higher than the retention rate for the college as a whole. This is consistent with retention rates for OER across semesters there. Using OER is a way to eliminate the need for a contingency plan for your course materials. They are the primary plan and the emergency plan. Let's talk money. How much have OER saved students at Toro College's New York division? Since our faculty began using OER instead of traditional textbooks in fall 2018, students have saved over $54,000. Yes, that's a lot. That's almost eight semesters of full-time tuition at NYSCAS. One student could get a bachelor's degree with the money OER have saved students. We are continuing to assess OER at Toro and we will be surveying students with a question on their final exams in some courses this semester. So we hope to have more updated information on savings and attitudes to share soon. Okay, again, my favorite topic. What are other people saying about success and retention? Colvard, Watson and Park out of the University of Georgia and Association of American Colleges and Universities shared their findings in an often cited 2018 paper titled, The Impact of Open Educational Resources on Various Student Success Metrics. Um, and they found that OER has been proven to lead to higher rates of student retention and outcomes. And here are some quotes from their paper. Students tend to perform better in course settings when OER textbooks were used in in-place of expensive commercial textbooks. And when considering federal Pell eligibility, they observed an increase in A through B plus letter grades and a decrease in B through DFW or DF and withdrawal grades when evaluating courses that have implemented OER. So OER connected to better academic performance, particularly among students who received or were eligible for federal Pell grants. And at Toro, we asked 61 psychology students what consequences they had faced for not being able to afford a required textbook for their class. And we found that at least 70% of those who responded had faced some negative consequence as a result of not being able to afford a textbook, including not being able to purchase that expensive material at all. I wanna highlight this cluster of responses that are particularly alarming. Nearly 20% of students said they had to drop a course because they could not afford the course materials. 23% had to withdraw from a class for the same reason. So now there's an even larger economic burden. More than 42% of students reported that they had earned a poor grade because they could not afford the course materials. And finally, almost a third of students said they had failed a course because they could not afford the text. This one was the hardest for me to read, and I hope it gives you pause too. These students stayed in the course, worked to their best of their abilities, and they did not pass because they could not afford a textbook. We cannot let $200 or even $50 in some cases stand in the way of our students' success. Okay, so now we've answered the what and why of OER. How can you use OER in your teaching? You can totally replace your current required course materials with OER, like swapping a commercial textbook for a free open option. You can use OER as a supplemental text to gauge student interest or as part of a course pack by combining OER, library resources, and other materials. You can replace ancillaries like paid quiz and test services with open options and or any other number of creative options. If you have an idea for changing your teaching materials, there's a very good chance that you can find or create an OER to fit that. 
Making the switch to a new OER textbook can be daunting, but you can test the waters in a couple of ways. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, you can use OER as supplemental materials. You can use library resources to make free options available to students, or if online work is the holdup, you can create a print copy of a digital OER using a print-on-demand service. This would cost anywhere from $10 to $30 based on the textbook which is not nothing, but is a fraction of the cost of a traditional textbook. Once you've decided you'd like to try OER, or even if you'd just like to see what's out there, there are many places to find materials. OASIS from SUNY Geneseo searches open content from 97 different sources and contains 385,629 records. SUNY has published a lot of great OER. Merlot comes from the California State University System. OER Commons is a global effort to collect open materials from a variety of parties at different educational levels. Users can upload or submit links to OER. Open Textbook Library is based at the University of Minnesota, but is supported by members of the Open Textbook Network. The library currently includes 714 textbooks, with more being added all the time. And BC Campus is funded by the Ministry of Advanced Education, Skills, and Training in British Columbia, Canada, and they have published a large array of OER, many of which have been flagged as reviewed, accessible, and or as having supplemental materials. A lot of these resources pull from the same places, so they may have some of the same content. It's up to you what you prefer, but I encourage you to search all of them. Just like with any other course material, including commercial textbooks, you should evaluate any OER you choose. On our library guide, which is linked here, there's a basic checklist to walk you through evaluating an OER, including the content and format, accuracy, accessibility, interactivity, and licensing. Librarians are also available and able to help you evaluate materials with your course needs in mind. And speaking of licensing, I just wanted to briefly touch on Creative Commons licensing, which is what is used to license OER in lieu of copyright. Creative Commons is a modular system, so authors can use the aspects of licensing that work best, including whether commercial or non-commercial entities can use and modify works, and how those modified works can be redistributed. However, unless an author has made their work available in the public domain, all work with a Creative Commons license requires attribution to the author. This chart shows um, the differences between traditional copyright, Creative Commons, and the public domain. The Toro College Libraries can help you through all stages of using OER, including evaluating OER options, selecting an OER and adding it to Canvas, teaching students how to access OER, supporting editing of OER to better fit course objectives, authoring your own OER, and sharing it when you're ready. Again, it is really our job as librarians to help you with OER, so please reach out if you would like to switch. If you are from a campus outside of New York, please feel free to reach out to your home library if you're more comfortable, or to email us, and we can figure out the best course of action. If you have any questions, you can learn more with our Open Educational Resources Guide, which is linked here, or you can contact us via email. Thank you.